Please turn to Jeremiah chapter 3. Some important passages, important thoughts from this passage that I would like to discuss this morning is about the anger of the Lord. And God, although He is a just God, although He is a holy God, He will not keep His anger forever. God's standard is the Word of God. And we must abide by that standard. And nearly, actually over 2,600 years ago, the prophet Jeremiah lived. He recognized God's mercy. He recognized God's grace, God's justice, God's holiness. And God used the voice of this prophet to communicate a message to God's people, to God's chosen people. In Jeremiah, he's been known as the weeping prophet. And sin should be something that is avoided at any cost. But Israel found themselves encompassed and swallowed up by sin, by the influence that was around them and the influence that was within them. For each one of them was accountable for their own deeds, for their own actions, just like we are today. And Jeremiah wept over the sins of his people. Later on in this book, in chapter 9, the Bible says in verse 1, describing Jeremiah, Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughters of my people. Now, have you, have you, have you, have you ever wept over your sin, like Jeremiah wept over the sins of the people of God? Have you ever wept over the sins of others? There are people in our life that what they do, how they live, sometimes are very grievous to us. This is where intercessory prayer comes. We must pray for them. We must look at ourselves. We must look at the Word of God. For the Word of God is our standard. The passage here in chapter 3 describes two types of people. There's the, what I'm going to call the Jacob type. The Jacob type, meaning the two tribes, the northern tribe and the southern tribe. And the Jeremiah type. Both types of people. The Jeremiah type of person says... I can't do this, but with God's help, I can. Whereas the Judah type says, I'm not going to do it, I won't do it. They're in blatant rebellion against what God wants them to do. We must uh, learn from the mistakes of others. God has given us a record of 66 canonical books of the Bible so that we can look into the scripture, we can learn what's the Bible says we have an entire history of the Jewish people and we should be able to learn from their mistakes, from their examples. The Bible tells us that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that's, that's why they are written. They're written for our learning so we can change when we look at them. When we look at what happened to these people during the time of Jeremiah, how God patiently waited for them to change. And yet, they refused. They did not change. God brought the tribes of the north, 725 years before Christ approximately, into captivity, into the Assyrian captivity. Thinking that the two tribes of the south, Benjamin and Judah, would learn from what happened to the north, but they didn't. 125 years later approximately, God took them into captivity, into Babylon. And now, we have Jeremiah, Jeremiah ministering to these people, these people of Judah, making reference to the tribes of the north as well. These Jacob type of people. People who 
want nothing to do with what God wants. There may be some today that think, or perhaps may think, that God has abandoned them. Well, He's not. He has not abandoned us. There may be some today who are deliberately running from God, much like the prophet Jonah ran from God. If we are here today in that situation, we must repent and turn back to God. There may be some who have unconfessed sin. Again, we must look to Christ and repent. For in Christ, we can find forgiveness. God hasn't given up on the Jacob type. God hasn't given up on us. He wants us to be conformed to the image of His Son. Let me encourage you to be the Jeremiah type of Christian. The Jeremiah type of Christian who relies upon God to be able to give him the strength, give her the strength to do what is needed to be done. God is rich in mercy. The Lord is always right. And our Lord Jesus Christ always has the answers. That is why we must strive to be a Christian that does what God wants. God sent this prophet Jeremiah to Israel who was, who was wallowing in their sin. They turned their back on God. They wanted nothing to do with Him. Now if there's somebody here today or within the sound of my voice who has turned their back on God for whatever reason there's grace, there's mercy found at the cross. God wants to have you restored to fellowship with Him. He doesn't want you to drift away forever. He wants, you to, he wants to bring you back into fellowship with Him. He wants to be a father to you. He wants you to come to Him as children. God is righteous, and we must accept the Bible as God's supreme source of truth. During the days of Jeremiah, people rejected the truth of God's words. Scripture has the answers to every vital question in their life, whether it's a big question or a little question. The book of all books shows us that the Lord Jesus Christ has died for us and is the Redeemer of the world. And in Him only is the remedy for sin. The Bible reminds us that God is merciful, God is full of truth, and God is just. The Scripture tells us and shows us the holiness of God. And that standard of holiness is something you must strive for. The people of Israel could not, or rather would not, be holy. They did everything that they could to be unholy and to rebel and to reject what God wanted them to do. But God, in His mercy, in His long suffering, wanted them to return. God wanted them to return. If we walk away, if we drift away from God, He wants us to return. But in the case of the Jacob type, in the case of these people that Jeremiah was ministering to, they refused to return to God. Now, if one is here today sliding away from God's standard, God wants you to return. You may be drifting away, slowly, gradually, away from what God wants you to do, but He wants you to return. God spoke through Jeremiah these words in verse 12 of chapter 3. 
Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and it will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. God has always been a God of mercy. From eternity past through eternity future, He's always been a God of mercy. Notice what the Bible said there at the beginning, of, uh, rather in the middle of this verse. I will not keep my anger forever. Yes, God intended to punish these people, to take them into captivity, after being long-suffering with them for 125 years. But he's not going to hold a grudge against them. They are still people he loves, he cares about. Even though Israel, the Jacob type, failed to do what was right time after time, God still showed mercy. God gave him that promise at the end of that verse, the end of verse 12. I will not keep my anger forever. God is always willing to forgive. Don't be like the Jacob type who rejected the forgiveness of God, rejected God's mercy, and who actually polluted the truth of God by their behavior and by their actions. Jeremiah 3.1 talks about this pollution earlier on in this chapter. It talks about how the people of Israel, how they put away their wives, committed spiritual adultery and physical adultery, and they polluted the land. Verse 1 of this chapter says that if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's wife, shall he return unto her again? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again unto me, saith the Lord. God wants those people, those Christians in our day who have drifted away from God, who are in the world, who have turned their back on biblical truth, He wants them to return. We may know people like this, we may have friends, relatives, we may be fighting with it ourselves. But if we drift away from God's truth, He wants and He expects us to return. Yes, Israel was guilty of idolatry, following false gods. It's hard to understand why these people would turn so quickly to idolatry. But they did. They had no technology. They had no print media. But yet, they turned away from following God, the one true and living God, to follow gods of stone, gods of wood, false gods, idols that they made with their own hands, and rejected what God had for them. God expects us to flee from idolatry. We may not have idolatry in the same form today as they had in their day, but it takes on a different form. An idol is something we can see with our eyes. That's the, the word inside idol is, has to do with seeing. But an idol replaces God, or an idol comes before God. These people that Jeremiah ministered to had something in their, in their life that they were putting in front of God, that, were, that they were substituting for God. You know, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the verse that talks about, in, in that chapter talks about, these things were written for our learning, they were written for our examples. In 1 Corinthians 10, 4, the Bible says, Wherefore, my delivery, wherefore my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Paul was communicating this truth to the church of Corinth. 700, 600 years later, they were having trouble with it as well. Church of Corinth, round numbers 2,000 years ago to today, 
some in our church, some Christians today, must flee from idolatry. Principles in the Bible, there are truths in the Bible that are true in any period of time. And this principle of idolatry was true in the days of Jeremiah, was true in the days of the church at Corinth, and it's true today in our time as well. We must flee from idolatry. We must model our life after those examples of the men and women of the Old Testament who had positive testimonies. Yes, we must learn from the mistakes of the past, of those of the past, and we have their mistakes. We should not follow after the Jacob type who dishonored Jehovah, but we should follow after those men and women who are recorded in Hebrews chapter 11 of the Hall of Faith. We must follow after those men and women, the great cloud of witnesses, who could testify to God's truth of what a wonderful God He is. Those are the examples we should follow. Sometimes when I work on a project, the first thing I learn is not how to do it. I make a mistake. I don't, I don't get it right the first time. So I do it again. Well, we have examples in the Old Testament of how not to do things. And we should learn what not to do. And God told these people in Jeremiah's time to return to him. But they were stubborn, and they didn't return. We should look to godly examples in our spiritual life, and not the examples of the world. Israel, they made, this, they made a huge transgression of God's law, and they refused to repent, and they refused to obey God. And the weeping prophet says, in verse 13, Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Israel had a big problem. Israel's problem was sin. Everybody sins. Sin is something we're born with. It's something we receive from Adam. By his sin, by the sin of that one man, Adam, death passed upon all of us. In verse 13, Jeremiah was pleading with these people. He was pleading with them to acknowledge their iniquity. Now in the New Testament, a very familiar verse in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, is a verse that's very familiar to us. It's a verse about confessing our sins. It's a verse that tells us how we can be restored to God's fellowship. Confessing is being quick to say what God says about our personal sin. The Jacob type will not acknowledge the fact that they sin. They will not acknowledge the fact that they've transgressed God's standard. Transgression, as, as mentioned here in this verse, is crossing the line of God's truth. Crossing the line of God's truth. Jesus Christ is depicted as being truth. He told Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When we transgress God's standard, we go against what God's Son says. We go against what God the Father says. We go against what God the Holy Spirit says. That's what transgression is. It's a violation of the law. 
We have in our, in our, in our laws in our society transgressions of various laws. Some of the laws are larger transgressions than other laws, but transgression is a violation of a righteous standard. People all over the world are running away from the truth. They're running away from the way. And they're running away from the life that they could have in Jesus Christ. They don't want to acknowledge their iniquity. They don't want to admit that they've transgressed God's law. They don't want to obey the voice of the Lord, but they want to do everything their own way. We, as God's people today, should not be the Jacob type. We should be the Jeremiah type, who, in his frailty, didn't think he could do it, but he relied upon God to assist him to do it. In verse uh, 8 of chapter 1, the God told Jeremiah, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. That's Jeremiah 1 8. We must trust in the Lord. If we trust in the Lord, we can be safe. We should not fear the faces of man. Because the fear of man brings a snare. We know in Proverbs 29, verse 25, the Bible says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. The peer pressure in ancient Israel was very great. So great that it caused the people to transgress God's law and ignore God's voice. What does peer pressure do to us today? The Jeremiah type fears and obeys God. That's what we should do. But the Jacob type fears and obeys man and finds himself ensnared in wickedness. The people of Jeremiah's time was, were ensnared in wickedness. They were ensnared in transgressions against God's law. And God wanted them to return to him. They wanted to go back to what God wanted them to do. Je Jehovah commanded them to repent. He wanted to bring them to Zion. Verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. I am married unto you, and will take you one of a city, and two of a family, and will bring you unto Zion. God pleaded with Israel to turn from the path of sin. They wanted a certain tact, and God wanted them to turn. In this verse, Israel is pictured as the wife of Jehovah. And he wanted to restore the broken fellowship that they had. The Lord wants to bring the cities and families back to the truth. He wanted to bring them back to Zion. It is not always easy to obey. Israel was in blatant rebellion against God. The Jacob type enjoys backsliding. Are you backsliding today? Well, the Jeremiah type realizes their frailty and recognizes God's strength. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7 and following, Jeremiah states, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Whatever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to live, deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth. Jeremiah was told to be ready to go where God sent him. 
and to be ready to say what God told him. This is the characteristic of the Jeremiah type. To go when God says to go, and to speak when God says to speak. The Jacob type is one who refuses to do God's word, to do God's will, and to obey God's law. And in fact, the Jacob type is one who goes in contrary, complete 180 degree difference to where God wants him to go, and lives in blatant rebellion against what God wants. Remember a sermon about a month ago, his name shall be called Emmanuel. Well, his name, that, that in that the name Emmanuel means God with us. And God is promised to be with us. God incarnate became flesh. He came down to earth to be with us. And at the end of that passage of the Great Commission in Matthew 28, the verse 20 or so, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you all way, even unto the end of the world. Christ told the apostles, I am with you all way. He told Jeremiah, I am with thee. So God is going to be with us. God is consistent. Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ, they are consistent. They promise to be with us. And why it is that many people, why it is that his chosen people had run away from him and did things contrary to the words of truth, I don't understand. Why is it sometimes that we do exactly the same thing? Why is it that we run away from God's truth, from God's standard, and do things that we want to do that are in opposite of what God wants to do? Let, let God's Son bring you to the place where He wants to take you. Don't refuse to be directed by His hand. He has promised to be with us. He is rich in mercy. He doesn't want us to fear the evil one. He doesn't want us to succumb to peer pressure. He paid the ultimate price so we can be righteous in God's eyes. I mean, think of God's great love. I mean, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Think of what God did for us. He certainly cares for us. He didn't start over again. He made provision for our salvation. We should not run from God. We should desire to have fellowship with Him. We need to turn to Him for direction. We turn to Him for our salvation. We turn to Him for deliverance, for eternal destiny or eternal soul. We should turn to Him every single day and try to maintain proper fellowship with Him. God desired the best for the people of Jeremiah's day, and God desires the best for us today. His desire is to feed us with knowledge and to feed us with understanding. Now Solomon, when he asked for something from God, he asked for wisdom. He asked for an understanding heart. In verse 15 of this chapter, the scripture says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. In this verse, pastor has reference to a shepherd. And in fact, in the New Testament, it's the same thing. The word pastor has the idea of shepherd. The Greek word behind our English word shepherd, the Greek word behind our English word pastor is, is shepherd. And the function of this shepherd is to feed the people with understanding, to feed the people with wisdom. The Jacob type wants no spiritual direction. They want to be in control. The Jeremiah type desires God's knowledge and God's understanding. In John 3.16, God gave us His only begotten Son. 
In Jeremiah 3.15, the Lord gave to us pastors according to his heart. He wants to feed you with understanding. This is what, as I said before, what Solomon desired to have. God's spiritual shepherds are needed to feed us with knowledge and with understanding. There are many who do not care about knowledge. There are many who do not care about understanding. Such was the case of the people here in Jeremiah's time. They didn't care about this, these things. They wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to go their own way. God is patient. God is merciful. He pleaded with his chosen people to change from their evil and from their wicked ways. Yet they refused. There may be some Jacob types today that are listening, that are here, or perhaps are not here. But still, never forget the one and only holy God He's full of mercy. He is full of mercy. He is willing to forgive. He is willing to bring you back. He wants us to stop backsliding and repent. He wants you to obey his voice. He wanted Israel to obey his voice. God doesn't change. The principles he set forth here in the book of Jeremiah are true today. He wants us to come back to him. He wants us to be in continual fellowship with him. He doesn't want, he doesn't want us to do things contrary to the word of God. He wants us to have wisdom. He desires that we have understanding. The creator of the universe wants you to remember the cross. To remember the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Quite often, we observe the Lord's Supper. It's a memorial supper. To remember just that. Christ's death, his burial, and his resurrection. Verse 16 of, of chapter 3, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass... When ye be multiplied and increase in the land in those days, that the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to, come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall they be done away any more. What a grave error they made to forsake the mercy seat, the sacrificial system typifying the redemptive work of Christ. It's, a, it's called the mercy seat. A place where people would come, the priests would bring the sacrifices so that the people's sins could be covered. And yet, people of the Old Testament were forsaking God's mercy. They were despising it. God gave Noah a promise, a covenant, a token. He gave him that, that rainbow in the sky. You know, the, when we have a type in the Old Testament, it's a promise that God's going to do something. That mercy seat was a type, of, a type of God's redemptive work. Everything that took place in the tabernacle pictured the cross. And we can look back at the cross, and we know that there is forgiveness that was there. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again, according to the scriptures. God wants these people of Jeremiah's day, he wanted them to repent. He wants us to repent as well. If we are living in sin, if we're drifting from God's truth, he wants us to do what is right. I mean, he gave us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary's cross, so that the fellowship that was broken in Eden could be restored. And 1 John 1 9 allows us to have continued restoration of that fellowship. 
The Jeremiah type lived by faith. The Jacob type, they lived by they lived by sight. Perhaps you have made a great mistake like some of these people in Jeremiah's day have. Perhaps you've allowed sin to have a toehold on your life. Perhaps you've stepped out of the will of God. Perhaps you're even in the darkest hours of your life. Are you blaming God for your circumstances? There is no vanity with God. Jeremiah chapter 2, 5 tells us that. We don't, we don't want to walk away from God's truth. The truth that's contained in the Word of God. God is perfect. He is just. He is true. And He has the words of life. Why would one go anywhere else other than the Word of God for their answers? But yet people do. The people in Jeremiah's day did. They, they were involved in looking at the circumstances. They were involved in seeing what others were doing. They were looking. Idolatry. They put things ahead of God. They replace God with vanity. The Word of God will give us victory over sin. We cannot reject the truth of Scripture. The children of Israel, they were exposed to God's truth, they were exposed to the Scripture, and yet they rejected what God had for them. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, the Bible reminds us, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's what the Jeremiah type does. They realize they could do things, not in their own strength, but in the strength of their God. They don't think, or they don't reject God's truth like the Jacob type does. The t- scriptures teach us forgiveness. And God is a forgiving God. In this example here, of Jeremiah chapter 3, God is reaching out his hands. He's waiting for the people to come and receive forgiveness or ask for forgiveness. He wants them to return. He wants them to repent. Now remember, there is always hope in Christ. We cannot drift away from the truth of Scripture. There's hope for Israel. There's hope for the Jacob type. God can change us. He can change the heart of stone and he can give us a heart of flesh. Understand what Jeremiah was saying. Look in verse 17. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord and all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of the evil heart. The Judah type was ignoring the law They were rejecting grace. They were wholly given over to idolatry. But God will have an ultimate victory. He has not given them up. The Bible says, right there in verse 17, Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of the evil heart. God, in his omniscience, God in his sovereign control, understands and is patient with people. He was patient with these people. He is patient with us. God has given us the imperative not to be conformed to the world. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The living word and the written word demonstrate to us the standard by which we should live. God is merciful. He is not holding the grudge. He wants to have fellowship with you, for He sent His only begotten Son to die in our place. He wanted Israel to come back sooner than later. He wanted them to come back. Verse 18 says, In those days the house of Judah, this is talking more futuristic now, in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. That's the northern tribe and the southern tribe. The southern tribe is Judah, the northern tribe is Israel. Tribes. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for inheritance unto your fathers. The fellowship of Judah and Israel will be restored. If their fellowship is able to be restored, 
that our fellowship can be restored. Whatever the circumstance we may be going through, whatever is going on with our life, God desires us to have a fellowship with Him, a fellowship that is current, a fellowship that is restored. God is holy. We as human beings, we're imperfect, but God is perfect. We as human beings have limitations. God is, His will is unlimited. We do not have the mind of God. There are just some things we can't understand. There are things in our life we don't understand why it happens. We don't understand why things happen to us or why things happen to friends we know or perhaps why things happen in this world we live in. We have a limited knowledge. But God is still in control. God is sovereign. God is loving. He is merciful. He is compassionate. And He is full, fully and completely holy and cannot stand sin. Lamentations reminds us it's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And see, we serve a patient God, a long-suffering God, a merciful God. God would have gotten rid of humanity far before the time of Jeremiah had he not been merciful. He's stretching forth his hands of mercy. He's waiting for people to come back. He wants people to look in the Word of God. He wants people to see how they have transgressed God's standard. God still hasn't given up. He will not keep his anger forever. For day is coming when they will be placed in the pleasant land. Look at verse 19. But I said, how long shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, the goodly heritage of the host of the nations? And I said, thou shalt call me my father and shall not turn away from me. Don't turn away from God. God will keep well, God will not keep his anger forever. Have you ever wept? Have you ever wept for the sin of others? Have you ever wept for your own sin? Have you ever said the same thing about your sin that God says about it? Jeremiah was greatly grieved over the sin of Israel. He wept because they would not repent. We get out hope in the Lord today. We get out hope what He is going to do for us, what He will do for us. The Jeremiah type is saying, I can do it with God's help. The Jacob type says, I'm not going to do it at all. I'm going to do my own thing. God hasn't abandoned you. God hasn't abandoned us. He cares for each one of us. Be the Jeremiah type of Christian. Look to God for the strength and forgiveness. Follow Him, the one and only true God. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to feed you on knowledge and understanding. If you're out of fellowship with God today, turn to Him for restoration. Let us all be the Jeremiah type and say, I can do it with God's help. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the truth that is contained in the scripture. Thank you that we get hope in Jesus Christ that is not based upon anything that we have done, but upon all that he has done for us at the cross of Calvary. We know that these people who lived during the days of Jeremiah were rebelling against you, were doing things that were completely contrary and against the standard of the Word of God. Please allow us today to learn from their examples, learn what not to do if we have sin in our life. Reveal this to us. Cause us to return to you. Allow our fellowship to be made sweet and to be restored to what it once was. Allow us to have the strength to daily walk with you. Not to turn from the right hand 
nor to the left hand, but stay on the narrow path, the path you would have us to be on. A path that would allow us to become more and more like your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Please allow Christ to be formed in us. Allow us to be made into him in his image. By your grace, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.